This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. It's just about universally understood that a president should be a unifier, should strive to bring people together. In America, e pluribus unum is the national, I mean, the national motto is actually in God we trust for some reason, but e pluribus unum is a motto of our country. Out of many, one. Now, there's the history of that can be taken that it's out of many colonies, one nation, but it has come to be known as out of many different people different groups of individuals, different faiths. We are one. We are one country, unified, the United States of America. And a president should uphold that. He or she should should strive to be a bridge builder, a unifier. Donald Trump has failed from the get-go to do that. Moments after coming down the escalator for his campaign announcement, he was calling Mexicans rapists. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. And I assume, I assume some are good people. From day one, Muslim bans, dividing us along racial lines, especially. Failing to condemn white supremacy. The most simple thing that any decent human being, let alone a president, can do. Remember the moment on the campaign trail when Jake Tapper from CNN asked him to condemn the the, the endorsement of David Duke and the KKK? And Donald Trump tripping all over himself, refusing to do so? Here it is if you don't remember former KKK Grand Wizard David Duke, who recently said that voting against you at this point would be treason to your heritage. Will you unequivocally condemn David Duke and say that you don't want his vote or that of other white supremacists in this election? Well, just so you understand, I don't know anything about David Duke, okay? I don't know anything about what you're even talking about with uh, white supremacy or white supremacists. So I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Did, Did he endorse me or what's going on? Because You know, I know nothing about David Duke. I know nothing about white supremacists. And so you're asking me a question that I'm supposed to be talking about people that I know nothing about. But I guess the question from the from the Anti-Defamation League is, even if you don't know about their endorsement, there are these groups and individuals endorsing you. Would you just say unequivocally you condemn them and you don't want their support? Well, I have to look at the group. I mean, I don't know what group you're talking about. You wouldn't want me to condemn a group that I know nothing about. I'd have to look. If you would send me a list of the groups, I will do research on them. And certainly I would disavow if I thought there was something wrong. But you may have groups in there that are totally fine and it would be very unfair. So give me a list of the groups and I'll let you know. Okay. I mean, I'm just talking about David Duke and the Ku Klux Klan here, but... And then, of course, there's the very fine people on both sides. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group. Excuse me. Excuse me. I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. Where Donald Trump praised virulent hateful white supremacists who marched on Charlottesville ostensibly to protest the removal of monuments to hate and slavery. They're very, these people wielding their tiki torches, screaming about Jews not replacing us, blood and soil type, very fine people to Donald Trump. And then, of course, just this last week during the debate, where he tells the Proud Boys, another white nationalist group, to stand back and stand by, boys. Stand by. 
But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to do specifically that, but do it? Well, I, go would ahead, say, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what are you what are you, you look, what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call them what do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and right like me to condemn? White Proud supremacists boys. and right Proud Proud militia. Boys, stand back and stand by. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left because this is not a right his wing own, problem. This is, this is a left wing. This is a left wing problem. White supremacist. Antifa is an idea, not an organization. Oh, you got it. Not militia. That's what his FBI. His okay. FBI director Gentlemen, said. Well, then, you know what? No, 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 we're, done, we're done, sir. Now, look, your run-of-the-mill Republican types will say, well, he's countless times condemned white supremacy. He does it all the 30 times he's done it. That is the tactic. Out of one side of his mouth, he says one thing. And then, more importantly, the message that's received by white supremacists is, we hear you. We hear you, brother. Secret handshake. We get you. Stand by. Loud and clear. Lima Charlie, commander, we got you. And this is the result. This is the result of that. Of that pandering to domestic terrorists. Yesterday, the U.S. attorney for the Western District of Michigan... Um, released a statement about the arrest of multiple individuals, militia ding-dongs, who were plotting to kidnap and kill the governor of Michigan. If you don't have time to read the relatively brief criminal complaint, which I'm going to read from here today, I would recommend that you read this New York Times article. FBI says Michigan anti-government group plotted to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Authorities charged 13 men, some of whom were accused of plotting to storm the state capitol building and planning to start a civil war. Donald Trump's compatriots. These are the people he refuses to condemn because he's desperately clinging to their support. So many people complained about uh, Hillary Clinton talking about the basket of deplorables. This is who she was talking about. It is coming to pass. People who are frothing at the mouth for a civil war. And Donald Trump does everything he can to skirt around the issue and fails to outright condemn them. Giving them the glimmer of hope that he's on their side. The glimmer of hope that there is hope for them. Listen to some of this. Well, first, he, briefly, here's the U.S. attorney. Just a minute or so of the U.S. attorney explaining what's going down. Here you go. Last night, the FBI and Michigan State Police arrested six individuals charged in a federal complaint with conspiring to kidnap the governor of Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer. According to the complaint, unsealed this morning, Adam Fox, Barry Croft, Ty Garbin, Caleb Franks, Daniel Harris, and Brandon Caserta conspired to kidnap the governor from her vacation home in the Western District of Michigan before the November election. Under federal law, each of these individuals faces a term of any number of years up to life in prison if convicted. Fox, Garbin, Franks, Harris, and Caserta are residents of Michigan. Croft is a resident of Delaware. All of us standing here today want the public to know that federal and state law enforcement are committed to working together to make sure violent extremists never succeed with their plans. This is serious business. Not, this isn't something to be played with. We've already bared witness to Donald Trump supporters sending pipe bombs that thankfully 
they were too stupid to arm. They were too stupid to actually put together. The, the, the Caesar Sayoc guy. We, we've, we've bared witness to the potential violence of Donald Trump's side. And now we got a group of dudes who are threatening to kidnap and kill a sitting United States governor of a state. And why, you ask? Because don't tread on me. I don't want to wear a mask. They believe that a, a, an order to wear a mask so as not to spread a deadly virus during a pandemic is tyranny. Let me tell you something, clowns. You've never been oppressed. If you believe the, the, a government uh, urging you to wear a mask, if you believe that is tyranny or oppression, you have never experienced it. You want to be G.I. Joe goons? Reading from the criminal complaint, early in 2020, the FBI became aware through social media that a group of individuals were discussing the violent overthrow of certain government and law enforcement components. Among these individuals identified were Croft and Fox. Through the electronic communications, Croft and Fox agreed to unite others in their cause and take violent action against multiple state governments that they believe are violating the Constitution. Constitutional scholars, everyone, I'm sure. I would, I would, I would hazard a guess that none of these clowns have even taken a, a community college course of Government 101 to understand even the most basic nuances of our Constitution. Yet, they claim that, well, we're, that we're being tread upon, y'all. This mask is tyranny. On June 6, 2020, Croft and Fox and approximately 13 other people from several states gathered in Dublin, Ohio. Confidential Human Source One was present at this meeting. By the way, by the way, it is notated in this criminal complaint that both of their confidential human sources, number one and number two, neither one of which, neither of them have uh, criminal records, and everything that they have brought evidence-wise to the FBI has been corroborated by both video and audio surveillance. So they're not just taking their word for it. Continuing on. Uh, confidential human source number one was present at this meeting. The group talked about creating a society that followed the U.S. Bill of Rights and where they could be self-sufficient. They discussed different ways of achieving this goal from peaceful endeavors to violent actions. At one point, several members talked about state governments they believed were violating the U.S. Constitution, including the government of Michigan and Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Several members talked about murdering tyrants or taking a sitting governor. The group decided they needed to increase their numbers and encouraged each other to talk to their neighbors and spread their message. As part of that recruitment effort, Fox reached out to a Michigan-based militia group and they're going to refer to that as the militia group. That militia group had already been brought to the attention of the FBI by a local police department in March of 2020 when members of the militia group were attending to obtain the addresses of local law enforcement officers. At the time, the FBI interviewed a member of the militia group who was concerned about the group's plans to target and kill police officers, and that person agreed to become a confidential human source. Blue Lives Matter, right? These are the same people who stormed the Capitol in Michigan with AR-15s, armed to the teeth. These are the same people that are, are planning violent insurrection of the United States government and the state government of Michigan. And again, these are the same people that Donald Trump, while saying Blue Lives Matter out of one side of his mouth, is not condemning out of the other. He is giving them aid and comfort. The President of the United States is courting violent extremists. White nationalists, white separatists, and constitutional experts, apparently. 
During one such meeting on June 18, 2020, which was audio recorded by Confidential Human Source 2, Fox militia group leadership, including Michigan resident Ty Garbin and the other Confidential Human Source, met at a Second Amendment rally at the state capitol in Lansing, Michigan. In an effort to recruit more members for the operation, Fox told Garbin and Confidential Human Source 2 he planned to attack the capitol and asked them to combine forces. This is a conspiracy against a state and ultimately the federal government. Where is the president of these United States to speak against it? He's hiding in his bunker, likely sucking his thumb in fear, hiding under his desk because he is a coward who doesn't have the moral authority or moral courage to call out these groups, to condemn these groups, because he needs every vote he can get, and even the vote of extremists and domestic terrorists are important to him. On July 27th, 2020, Confidential Human Source 2 met Fox at his business in Grand Rapids. He provided the FBI with an audio recording of the meeting. Fox said their best opportunity to abduct Governor Whitmer would be when she was arriving at or leaving either her personal vacation home or the governor's official summer residence. Both residences are located in the Western District of Michigan. Fox described it as a snatch and grab, man. Grab the fucking governor. Just grab the bitch. Because at that point, we do that, dude. It's over. Fox said that after kidnapping the governor, the group would remove her to a secure location in Wisconsin for trial. Now, there is a woman, a scholar, a historian, an expert on white supremacy and paramilitary organizations named Kathleen Ballou. She wrote a book called Bringing the War Home, The White Power Movement and Paramilitary America. Now, I have not read this book but the, my co-host of my podcast, I Doubt It With Dollamore, uh, Brittany Page, has read this book and recommends it highly. Maybe we should have Kathleen Blue on the show. The reason I mentioned Kathleen Blue is because she tweeted, being an expert in this field, she tweeted, the plot by militia members to kill Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer is exactly the kind of thing white power movement activists have been doing for decades. When they say they wanted to stage a trial, they often meant execution. And Donald Trump refuses to condemn them. He gives them aid and comfort. He fuels their fires of paranoia with the oxygen of complicity. It's exactly what he's doing. She, by the way, Kathleen Blue Blue is working on a new book that should be released in 2021 um, called A Field Guide to White Supremacy. It's 2020, almost 2021, and this is what we're dealing with in America. Not only, because we've always had extremist idiots out there plotting the demise of the Republic, but we have a president who won't do the right thing. Luckily, the FBI is in the fight. Luckily, the FBI isn't ignoring the problem, isn't burying its head in the sand like Donald Trump. I'm going to continue reading a few more paragraphs from this because it gets very chilling. On July 24th, 2020, Confidential Human Source 2 and Garbin contacted Fox by telephone. The call was recorded by Confidential Human Source 2. Fox said he had researched the governor's office online and he believed that the governor kept only a ceremonial office in Lansing. Fox wondered aloud whether the group just needed to party it out, make a cake, and send it. In what the confidential human source believed was a coded reference to sending a bomb to the governor. Fox discussed the need to train for the next three months to be ready to engage. Fox stated, quote, in all honesty right now, I just want to make the world glow, dude. 
I'm not even fucking kidding. I just want to make it all glow, dude. I don't fucking care anymore. I'm just so sick of it. That's what it's going to take for us to take it back. We're just going to have to, everything's going to have to be annihilated, man. We're going to topple it all, dude. It's what great frickin' conquerors, man. We're just going to conquer every fucking thing, man. Ugh. Fox and Garbin further discuss the need for the government to collapse because it has become so tyrannical. Wish I had a mask on my desk because that is the cause of this. The government needs to collapse because it's become so tyrannical that it tries to protect its citizens from infection from a deadly, invisible virus. Don't tread on me. I'm a white guy in America. I'm an endangered species. Idiots. Weaklings. Who wouldn't know oppression or tyranny if it actually stepped on their little pencil necks. And then there's one last very brief section here that I want to read because this is, I mean, this, this, is, this is the crux of it. On July 26, 2020, Fox told Confidential Human Source number 2, maybe we should just make a bunch of cupcakes and send them out in an apparent reference to a more widespread bombing campaign. Where is Donald Trump? He wants to be president of the United States, but he still wants the support of these radicals. And listen, I know I've used the words white nationalist and white separatist, and these are militia groups. They're all playing in the same field. They're all part of the same game. They all have the same objective. Now, I don't know the racial makeup of these particular over a dozen individuals who are targeted by this criminal complaint. I don't know. But between you and me, we know. We know that the, the, this is a bunch of white dudes who feel oppressed because of the need to wear a mask. Vote. Fewer than 30 days. Three weeks we're looking at. And we can put an end to this. We can actually step forward into modernity and take part in actually squashing this movement. Because I can tell you what, Joe Biden, for all his faults, isn't going to give them room to move. He's not going to give these white separatists and white nationalists and Nazis in Charlottesville and Proud Boys He's not going to give them aid and comfort. He's not going to soothe the, the, uh, their, their souls with the salve of, uh, with the salve of, 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 of uh, allyship. He's not going to do that. That's Donald Trump's work. We need to get rid of him. And uh, the time has come. Vote. Anyway, I, I would love to know what you think. 714-576-4054. As always, you can email me. You can email me a voice memo from your smartphone or just a regular old email to daily at dollamore.com. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for sticking with me. This is important stuff. Some of this stuff is not as, uh, uh, as sexy on YouTube and it doesn't get the clicks or the, uh, or the views, but it is important. I know that criminal complaints are not, uh, are not casual reading material. That's why I do some of this stuff. Please share this video. People need to know what we're up against, what dark forces are out there that exist in reality, that are plotting the demise of the government, that are plotting the kidnapping and death of governors, maybe your governor. This isn't an isolated incident. This kind of stuff is happening all over the country. I grew up in Northern Idaho where militias are all over the place. It is a problem. Anyway, uh, I will see you next time. I would love your support here on YouTube. If you are in a fa financial position to do so, you don't have to budget it in. If it's not a problem for you, 
listen, it, these times are tough. And if, if it is, if $2 a month or $5 a month gives you a little heartburn and you have to budget it in, do not worry about it. My content's always going to be free, whether it be here on YouTube or my podcast, always free. But if, if you do and you're motivated, if I bring you enough value to help support my work here, click the join button down there. You can become a channel member for fewer than $2 a month and help support independent media voices just like mine. Uh, anyway, uh, I'll see you. Connect with me on social media. Subscribe if you haven't here. I'll see you next time. I appreciate you guys. Be genuine. Take care of one another.